Hello and welcome to a new video of Explore Bio on Research and Publishing. If you are a student or a researcher, at some point of time you have to write a research paper, a review, a book chapter, a thesis, a proposal or present your research at a conference. In any of these cases, you are asked to submit an abstract. Although the students and researchers can and do write an abstract, but that does not even sound like an abstract. It is full of background or results or future implications. So in today's video you will learn how to write a perfect abstract, its importance, what should be included in it and some of the key tips for writing a perfect abstract that you may not find elsewhere. So watch this video till the end. So let's begin with what an abstract is. An abstract is a summary of your research, review, proposal or thesis. An abstract represents each of the major sections of the manuscript including introduction, methods followed, major findings and your conclusions. Ideally an abstract ranges from 150 to 300 words. But why is it important to write an abstract and why is it even asked? In the fast moving world each one of us is very busy and it is important that we invest our time wisely reading the papers that are really very useful. Abstract appears as the ideal solution for this and it benefits both the readers and the authors. As the abstract is short, concise and compiled summary of your entire research or thesis, it is easy for readers and evaluators to get an idea reading just the abstract whether the entire paper, proposal or thesis is worth reading or considering for evaluation. For the one who is writing the abstract, this is very very important as a poor abstract lacking key points leads to some major problems. First, mostly readers read and cite your research article, review or book chapter only if they find the abstract interesting, otherwise they won't even read your entire manuscript. Secondly, if it is for a project or research proposal and the evaluation committee is not convinced with your abstract, they may not approve and sanction your project just because it was poorly written. Thirdly, if it is an abstract of a conference, the attendees will have a look at your title and abstract and may pre-decide not to listen to you if the abstract is not convincing. So take time to write a great abstract. Now let's see some of the major components of an abstract or what should be included in an abstract. Abstract starts with a short background or motivation of the research. The background should ideally be one or two sentences long and aims at familiarizing readers to what motivated you to do your research or the thesis. Next you mention the actual challenge or the problem for which you are finding a solution or an answer. Ideally, this should also be not more than one or two sentences long. Similarly, in one or two sentences, mention the overview of the method or approach you followed to achieve your goals or the objectives. You can also mention about the specific technique and the samples used in the study to make it more clear. Next mention the most important outcomes of your work. The outcomes should meet your intended objectives of overcoming the existing challenge or the research gap. This means the results you mention should be an answer for the problem you were seeking an answer. At last mention its implication. How your work is going to impact or benefit the scientific community or industry. If subsequent work is required to validate your findings, you may mention it too. Just be honest with the results and their implications and do not exaggerate it. Abstract may be of two types. It may be structured or unstructured depending upon the guidelines of the university or the research journal. If it is unstructured, all the components are written in a single paragraph. But if it is structured, you provide the information under subheadings mentioned in the guidelines such as the background, methods, results and conclusion. Now it's time to share some of the important tips for writing a good abstract. Always write abstract at the end of writing the entire research article or thesis. This is because unless you complete other sections, you won't be very clear about the major limitations in the existing literature, aim of your paper, the key findings or outcomes the impact it may create and its future implication. Once you complete writing other sections, you will get more clarity and can write a better abstract. Do not copy paste sections of the thesis or research paper to an abstract. Such an abstract is considered to be very poor. 
Rather, what you can do is present your research in front of your supervisor or other authors. This way, you will gain more clarity and confidence about your work. Others may point out an interesting finding to highlight in an abstract. If you know your work, you can definitely write the entire abstract without even scrolling through the various sections of the manuscript. There should strictly be no typographical or grammatical errors. As abstract is one of the first few things readers and evaluators go through, so make sure it is error-free and concisely compiled. Do not write too much about background or methods used. Readers are more interested in results and the outcomes of your work. So keep them short and highlight results and its significance. Each section of the abstract should be in proper flow and all the sections should feel connected. A thesis abstract or a research paper abstract summarizes the work already done by you. So it is written in the present or past tense but never in future. On the other hand, a research proposal aims at the research that needs to be done. So it is written in a future tense. Also, as the research is not yet done, so you won't have results. So in such an abstract, you write all other things except the results. Never provide a citation in an abstract. You can surely mention the works referred in introduction, discussion or other sections. I hope this video will help you writing a great abstract. They will definitely influence and attract readers to read and cite your research or thesis. Also, it will compel project evaluators to consider it for funding. If you find the video useful, then you must check out my other videos on how to write a great research paper, a strong review. I have also made separate video on how to write a strong research proposal. Their links are given in the description. Do share and subscribe to get informed as soon as I upload another video. Thanks and see you in my next video.